What a blessing. Thank God for that good song. Good night. That's only like the second time I've ever heard that song. It, that'll touch your heart. Hallelujah. Well, good morning, everybody. <laughs> um, that's, that's, that's what you, you uh, say to somebody right before you're getting ready to tell them the bad news. Uh, take your Bible turn to John chapter 13. I want to talk to us Christian people this morning. I believe that if we're going to have a great youth rally and a, a great church, that um, uh, if, if, you know, Christian people got to get right with the Lord first. And if we get right, sinners will get saved. That's a known fact. Church gets right, people get saved. The old saying is, when Jonah got right, Nineveh did. John chapter 13, and we'll look this morning at uh, verse 34. Great verse of Scripture here. Everybody look at this now. If you're a Christian, you look at this verse of Scripture, and I will talk to you this morning just like it was me and you sitting in my office and you was the only one listening. John chapter 13 and verse number 34. John 13 and verse 34. Everybody looking at it? Everybody looking at it? A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. The Lord said that we're to love each other as Christians, just like He Loved us. Good night. That's a task. Man got up one time and he said, he made an announcement, preacher did. He said, I'm going to preach on the eleventh commandment. And everybody sitting there said, What are you talking about? There ain't but ten commandments. That's blasphemy. You shouldn't talk like that. He said, I'm going to preach on the eleventh commandment. And everybody said, Preacher, there's no such thing. And he used that scripture. The Lord said, A new commandment. A new commandment. I give to you. You know all the others. Thou shalt not this. Thou shalt not that. Thou shalt love the Lord. Thou shalt keep the Sabbath day holy. Worship idols. All that stuff. He said, now I'm going to give you a new one. He said, this new one is, you love each other like I have loved you. Now, don't you pay attention to me this morning. Don't look at them cell phones. All right? One man said, well, I just got my Bible on my cell phone. You also got the weather and the ball game scores. And all, so you bring your Bible in here like you've got good sense. Just like this. You can't hold your verse right here and then look at another verse over here and all that with that cell phone Bible. Bring your Bible and you read it. I'm going to talk to you this morning about Christians acting like Christians. Christians acting like Christians. Now, the truth is this morning, sometimes we as God's children don't act like God's children. We don't act like we should act. But it's in the Bible that we should love one another as He hath loved us. The Lord commanded you to love every Christian just like He loved you. Now, we are a family. Shining like Baptist Church, we're a family. We're brothers and sisters in Christ. This is a diverse family. We got people in here from different backgrounds. We have people in here from a uh, different culture, different uh, raised different, different parts of the county, surrounding counties. And a lot of us, the only thing we have in common is that we're saved and love the Lord. But that's enough. That makes us brothers and sisters. When I first got saved, I come to church and I heard everybody saying, Brother this and brother that. And I thought, it's sort of weird. Why is everybody calling each other brother? And then I found out that we was a family. And that the Lord's our Father. And that we're brothers and sisters in Christ. And I began to look at this uh, Scripture about one another and how we as Christians should treat one another. It's amazing. I've got... You ever heard a preacher say... You ever heard a preacher say, I've got four things I want to tell you this morning. Well, you know how many I've got? Thirty-two. Thirty-two. I promise you I'll try to be done by one thirty. I'm going to try to be done. I have thirty-two things to talk to you about. 
Now, the truth is, I figure I'm going to give you about all you can handle with about six of them. And maybe we'll come back tonight and, and, and uh, get the other 26. But uh, I'll, I'm going to talk this morning about how the Bible talks about one another, one another, one another, one another, on oh, 32 times. Here in John 13, 34, it said we're to love one another. Matter of fact, the Lord said one time, By this shall all men know that you're my disciples, that you have love one for another. The one true test of a Christian is how they love each other. Lord, according to that, I know some people that's in going to a bad place when they die. I, I'm telling you, now you can get me up on this a little bit, brother. Uh, we're supposed to love one another. The Lord said, by this shall all men know you're my disciples. I know people that say, buddy, everybody at our church carries a King James Bible. And we believe the King James Bible. Well, good. I do too. You know who else believes the King James Bible? The devil. Uh, that don't make you nothing. That don't make you special. That don't. The devil believes every word in the King James Bible. You say, buddy, everybody at our church dresses up nice and we dress nice and everything. Yeah, you know who else does? False cults. I mean, Herbert W. Armstrong wore a suit and tie. That don't make you a Christian. I know people that say, I'll tell you one thing at our church, buddy. Uh, we have strict rules to go by. So do Jehovah Witnesses and Mormons. That don't make you a Christian. You know what the Lord said? By this shall all men know you're my disciples by how you love one another. One of the things that struck me when I first got saved was I seen Christians just loving each other. And I'm talking about really caring. Like when somebody, somebody, one of the ladies has had surgery or something. You know, sometimes you'll hear the other lady get together and go and clean up their house or take dinner to them or call them and check on them or go by and see them in the hospital. Just love one another. By this shall all men know that you're my disciples. Well, you're not, you're, uh, you say, buddy, we shout at our church. That's good. They shout at ball games. You say, buddy, uh, uh, we, we give a lot of money at our church. That's wonderful. They do that in, in false cults. You know, the Lord said, by this. You know, in a lot of churches tonight, this morning, uh, we love things and use people. And it shouldn't be the other way around. We ought to love people and use things. A lot of ministries love things and use people. You do not use people to build a ministry. You use your ministry to build people. A man asked me one time years ago, he said, where do you get all these good workers? I said, we make them. You make them. You grow them like you're growing in the garden. You pray, you fast, you preach, and they get saved and you teach them what's right. You raise, you don't, we don't get our, we don't, a lot of our workers, we don't get, like from other, people don't send people here to help us, our church. We grow our own. And that's the way it should be. We love one another. Amen. Somebody said this. They said, for me, to love the whole world, it is no chore. My problem is, my neighbor next door. That's the truth. Amen. That's, that's the truth. Somebody gets, uh, um, Somebody gets a new car in the church. I've heard people say, Oh, boy, that is who they think they are. <laughs> you know, according to the Bible, we should be happy when God blesses somebody else. When they get a house, uh, when somebody gets something, when the Lord blesses them, uh, we should be happy. Like, like I do one of my girls, or one, my, my sister. My sister got a new car not long ago. I said, Hallelujah, can, when can I drive it? I didn't get mad. I was glad. Uh, there's something wrong with Christians that don't like it when God blesses other Christians. Do y'all agree with that? I mean, does that, am I making sense? I'm going to talk to you just like a friend this morning, real plain and practical. Uh, there's something wrong with Christians who get mad when God blesses other Christians. Uh, we ought to say, praise God, hallelujah. Now, I ain't got much, but if God blesses you, praise God for you. Maybe, he'll come, maybe they'll come get you and take your ride in it one of these days. Don't get mad. We should love one another. But I want to say another thing this morning. We should be devoted one to another. This is in Romans chapter 12 and verse 10. We should be devoted one to another. Just like your normal flesh and blood family, we should be devoted one to another. Amen? Uh, whether you, you, I, I've heard people say, uh, Lord, have compassion on this old world. You know that's a wasted prayer. 
It's a wasted prayer for us to pray God and have compassion on the world. He's already did it. God had compassion on the world when He let His Son die. Me and you's the one need to have compassion on this world. God's had all kinds of compassion. He gave His only begotten Son. The Lord let Him, him beat His Son to death to show His compassion on this world. You and I are the ones that ought to have compassion on this world, ladies and gentlemen. You and I ought to be the one that care. Not only that, we're to give preference one to another. This is number 3, and there's 32 of them. Romans chapter 12 and verse 10. We ought to prefer one to another. Amen? Many people can re- not many people can rejoice at the success of another Christian. Not many people can rejoice when other Christians are blessed. Uh, not very few preachers can rejoice when they hear about God blessing another preacher or a church or a ministry. It's just, it's not in our nature. The only way you can do that is be right with God. And if it bothers you when God blesses another Christian or even another ministry, you, you, my friend, need to get your heart right with God. You are not right with God. It ought, listen, if we hear about a revival breaking out up here at another church this morning, we ought to shout. That's right. Amen? If we, because it might be that revival that gets one of my grandkids saved one of these days. It might be that revival that gets your boy or girl. Uh, listen, we started that church in Marion many, many years ago. Uh, there was preachers got mad. There was one preacher got some other preachers together, and they tried to get up a petition to stop me from starting that church. Preachers, not sinners. The guy at the pool hall didn't say nothing. It was right across the street. I mean, he probably said something, but it didn't, you know, it didn't really bother us. And that we expected it from them. And there was preachers got, tried to get up a petition to stop us from starting a church. There's a lady laid up, lived right up the street by the name of Opal Henley. Many of y'all remember Miss Opal? And Miss Opal, uh, she told me years later, she said, Brother Danny, I didn't know you. And she said, I had no idea who you was. But when you started that church, she said, I come down the street and I seen that old building. And she said, you know what I said? I said, God, God, maybe you'll use that church. To get my boy, get him right with God. See, that's the right attitude for a Christian to have. That's the attitude a Christian ought to have. She said, God, maybe you'll use that church. And you know what? Miss Hopel's done, done gone went to heaven now. And uh, I ain't got time to tell you the whole story, but I can tell you one. And right now, there's a young man got right with God because of that church. He later became my associate pastor, and his name Bruce Ward. And then Brother Bruce Ward got started church, and he's pastoring a church now. And her boy that she prayed for drives a van every single Sunday to that church and never misses a church service. Now that's how God honors it when you have the right attitude towards somebody else. Listen, if you and some of them preachers that tried to get a petition, some of their kids went wild as a buck. Now, I'm going to tell you, and I'm not saying that's why, but I am telling you, you better. God looks down and He sees our attitude towards other people. And if you've got an old sour, hateful, bitter, jealous, mean spirit toward another Christian, you better get that right with God because it ain't helping, it ain't helping you and it ain't hurting them. Listen, God blessed Miss Opal. He answered her prayers. Her boy is serving God today. She's in heaven shouting about it. You know why? She had the right attitude. She had the right attitude. Let me tell you something happened the other day. And I'm on number three and there's 29 more, so just chill. Just be, take it easy. You, some of y'all, we've, we've been trying to get everybody to fast for the youth rally. We're going to fast today. Now, I know all of you will be here at Sunday night service because I ain't going to let you out till 6 o'clock. And we'll just stand up and sing a song and start the 6 o'clock service. How's that? Uh, is there anybody in here that don't need it? Is there anybody here that don't need some good preaching to your life? Is there anybody here that don't need to fast? That's what I figured. All right. All right, let's do it. I'm going to tell you something. Uh, let me tell you what happened the other night. I was in a revival down there near Charlotte, and we was in there talking, and uh, I, I, I was talking to this young pastor. And this young pastor, he came up to me and he said, you know what, Brother Danny? He said, I want you to come into my church and preach. And he said, I want to start a bus ministry like you got. And I said, hey, man, you better believe it. I'll do it, brother. That's right up my alley. Let's do it. And, uh, and uh, somebody heard us say bus... 
And they heard us say bus. And they said, well, that guy right there has got one he's trying to get rid of. I said, really? So this guy come over here. I said, uh, yeah, so you got a bus you want to get rid of? He said, that's right, you know, and, and everything. And he said, that's right. And uh, I, I, he started telling me about it. And I said, right here's a man looking for one. Here's a preacher. And here's a man. And I thought the Lord must have used me to find that out and get him hooked up. I said, we just now said he wanted the bus ministry. There's a man with a bus. Y'all talk to each other. And I was shaking hands, you know, and everything. And I was sort of listening to them too. Hey, how you doing? Shaking hands. Uh, the more I heard them talk, uh, he he had this bus, and he had he started telling about it. You know, I figured somebody's got a bus. It's a 1940 and 2,000 million miles on it, and been wrecked and everything else. And uh, this was a 99 little short bus, and it had a handicap ramp, and it's owned by as long here that you don't even have to have a CDL license to drive it. And uh, and he was asking about something. He's going to give it to him. And everything in me said, stupid idiot. Why'd you tell him about that preacher? I wanted that bus. I said, that bus should be a shining light parking lot. That's our bus. Run your big mouth. And, you know, and, and I thought, I, I told that preacher, I said, you don't want that bus. You want a nice big long bus. I didn't say that, but that's what I wanted to. Now, you know what that is? That's this flesh. We prefer ourselves over somebody else. And I stood there and thought, God, what did I tell him that for? The guy gave it to him. It's a 99. We ain't never owned a bus that new. The newest bus we got is that 97 we got. All the rest of them is 86, 87, 80. A 99 bus, brother. If it didn't have 60,000 miles on it, that's like a new Cadillac for a bus worker. I went, Ugh. Handicap ramp. No seating. We could take groups to see in a little bus like that. I was sitting there, I was sitting there like, and then I thought, that's not right. God used you. Help that boy get that bus now. Shut up and quit being like that. And you know, you've got to watch yourself. You've got to watch this flesh because our flesh is natured me first, you next. Amen? When it comes right down to it, we watch out for old number one here. And I was wrong for feeling like that. Well, I went down there and preached this week, and there sat that bus in the parking lot. I mean, that thing was white and shiny, and they didn't have their name put on it. I said, glory to God. I, I, I said, praise the Lord, y'all got a bus. And I got over it, and I preached Thursday night real hard, and Jason and Crystal came and sang, and buddy, i tell you what, the power of God moved, and half the people in the church was crying, and it got in the altar, and it started a bus ministry, and they are going to have a meeting today to start a junior church, and you know what? They're going to, they're going to meet people in heaven one of these days, because we'll let him have that bus. Amen? That's the way we ought, to, we ought to get the right attitude. You ought to have our attitude right. Are y'all listening to me? this morning, you make sure your attitude is right toward other Christians and toward the church and toward other ministries. Don't get mad because some of your kin folks uh, go to another church and you don't like the preacher or you don't like something the preacher did or somebody that goes there or something like that. And they get a, Don't get mad over it. Say, Lord, whatever they've done crazy, they'll answer to you for it. Bless them. Bless that church. May souls be saved. You prefer one another. I heard about a girl in college, a Christian girl. And this girl was working. Her roommate didn't have a job. And at work, her roommate had been praying for a job, and at work she got offered a big paying job. And she prayed about it and wanted it real bad, but she felt like the right thing to do was to tell her roommate because she didn't have one. And she went back and told her roommate, I heard about this job, and let her have that job paying a lot of money. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking the same thing I was thinking. I thought, well, why couldn't I just quit and let her have my job and I'll get the one that pays a lot of money? That's the way your flesh thinks. And but did you know the Bible don't teach that's the way we're supposed to act? Lord, it's quieter in Turkey Farm Yard. If it wasn't for these babies cutting up, it, I think it's empty in here this morning. Say amen right there. Be a preference one to another. 
Number four. We have 28 more. Be of the same mind one to another. Ladies, listen to me. Romans 12, 16. Men, listen to me. The Bible says that we as Christians ought to be of the same mind one to another. That means in my mind, I'm supposed to look at, at Brother Clark here, same way as I do Brother Derek, and I, I, don't, I don't cut him slack and condemn him just because I like one or don't like the other. Now, ladies, you're going to have to work on this. Every lady in here is going to have to go home and pray about this. Because I know how you are. I've been pastoring since I was a kid myself. And I know if you like somebody, you'll cut them some slack. And if you don't, you'll condemn them. Somebody that's... Give you an example. Just right off the top of my head. Now, I have nobody in mind when I say this. Say somebody's pregnant. You, you, uh, somebody's pregnant in the church. And that, that girl who's pregnant, she misses Sunday night. She misses Wednesday night. If she's one of your friends and you really like her, you say, bless her heart. She's having all that sickness, you know. Bless her heart. Let's pray. Lord, she's having a hard time. Now, if it's a girl you don't like, I've heard it said, just because she's pregnant, she's laying out of church, huh? And you'll cut your buddy slack and condemn the one you don't like for the same thing. Now, are you, are you getting this this morning? Be careful of condemning somebody for one thing and letting somebody else buy with it. I'm going to turn me down just a tad, brother. Be careful of letting your friends slide and condemning somebody for doing the same thing because you don't like them and want them to look bad. The Bible said, be of the same mind. One to I catch myself doing that, and I say, Danny, that ain't right. The Bible, we're supposed to treat everybody alike. We're supposed to not prefer one above the other. We're supposed to be of the same mind one to another. Amen. We're not supposed to uh, let somebody slide. Uh, they, 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 those, those, our bus kids, bless their heart, them bus kids, I love them. I don't know about you. I love them. They get on my nerves? Yes. Uh, do they, they do stuff sometimes I want to knock a knot on their head? Yes. Uh, but I love them kids. I love them. We wouldn't have a bus ministry if I didn't love them kids. I care about them. I really do. Sometimes I act like I don't. You brats get out of here. But I'm telling you, brother, I pray. We spend thousands of dollars. Listen, and I'm telling you this morning, oh, you see my little deacon right here? See my deacon? Look at him. Sir. Stand up our deacon. That boy right there, he's a blessing. Amen. What a blessing he is. Amen. I'm going to tell you something this morning. That boy right there to the Lord Jesus Christ is just as important as Brother Ray sitting over there who's never missed a service in 13 years. In the Lord's sight, that boy right there is just as important. There ain't, yeah, don't you get this idea that, well, I'm this in the church and I'm that. I'm sort of a big shot around here. There ain't no big shots here at Shining Light Baptist Church except Jesus Christ. I ain't no big shot. I just happen to get to preach and be the preacher. I'm a servant. I'm a minister. I'm supposed to serve. I can't stand in churches where you have this little clique that's everybody worships in this one little group and say, oh, I'd love to be in that group. I'd love to be in the elite. There ain't no such thing as the elite. We're all sinners saved by grace. We all deserve to go to hell. There's no big eyes and little you. We're all on the same level. The ground is level at the foot of the cross. Say man right there. You say, well, our, my little kids are better than these. No, they're not either. We're all sinned and come short of the glory of God. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Let me say this, number five. I'll hurry. We should stop judging one another. Stop judging one another. When I first started pastoring, you talk about judging. I got it. He's too young. He has no formal training. He's never been to Bible college. He can't this, he can't that, he can't... I still get it now, worse than I did then. There's always somebody to pass judgment on you. People who sit around and judge people are usually people who are not doing anything for God. Amen? Amen. I mean, we'll get criticism at the youth rally. Why don't you do that? One man told me, he said, why do you have it over there in that hot place? I said, because ours ain't big. You can't put a thousand people in here. 
And we don't do that just for fun, brother. I'd love to be able to have. Wouldn't it save us thousands of dollars? Save us moving all in chairs, all that stuff. You know, there's always somebody judging every move you make. You know what your best bet would do? Your best bet would be say, you know what? My church is going this way. I'm going with them. Praise God. Let's jump on the bandwagon. Let's get the job done. Let's see souls saved. Don't get in some old critical, bitter spirit where you just jump back and criticize the choir and criticize the Sunday school and criticize uh, the singing and criticize the preaching and criticize the... The Bible says, let us not judge one another anymore. Romans chapter 14 and verse 13 said, let us not judge each other any, any, anymore. Here's what I told a man one time. This man was judging people in his church. I want you to use your imagination. Everybody ready? Let's use our imagination for a minute. Here's what I want you to do. Imagine right now. Use your imagination now. I can. Everybody in here, our skin and bones, our skin and our flesh and fat are gone. We're skeletons. All right? Everybody in here is just a skeleton. Now look at that. Now look. Close your eyes and we're all skeletons. Clang, 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 clang. You can hear bone crack. Imagine everybody in here is just a skeleton. You did it? Did you do it? Some of y'all have no imagination at all. You, you watch TV too much. Use your imagination. We're all skeletons. Now that's the way we look to God. We're all the same. Well, it ain't this and dressed nice and that and got a nice car and that and got a clunker and that one's got money in the bank and that one's broke and that one's black and that one's white and that one's little and that one's big and that was a, that's a, a, no, brother, we're not to judge one another. We're all sinners and the same in the sight of God. We're supposed to honor God, worship Him together and do what God wants us to do. Worst thing you can do in your church is start judging people and looking down on people like you're better than they are. Because if you do that, you wind up in a fault-finding contest, and then we're all guilty. Yes, sir. Our bus kids, they tickle me. You know what they tickle me for? They're just, they're like, they're just happy and pure. They say what they think, too. You know, I preached on mom. Mom going to heaven a couple of weeks ago, and I got stopped that Sunday morning. Teenage bus kids, and one, one teenage bus kid come out like that, and he said, Brother Danny, aren't you getting married? I said, yep, that's my plan this time. He said, I'm happy for you. Praise the Lord. And I said, amen, brother. And then, then these girls come right behind him. And they said, Brother Danny, we're going to be praying for your mama. Mom been in heaven two years. I said, I thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> and just let them go on out. You know what? They're sincere. They're sincere. They said, Brother Danny, we're going to have you through. They don't... They're, they don't. They ain't. They ain't in church politics. They ain't in a clique. They don't in a. They just say, "Praise God, we're going to church." Now, you know who messes up kids? Wicked adults. I heard that, didn't you? That person that you don't like. I'll tell you a story. Now, this will help some of you if you'll listen to me. A man. Lost his axe. We're on number four. There's 28 more to go. I'm aware of the time. A man lost an axe. He said he lost his axe and he couldn't find it. And he thought, I bet I know who did it. My neighbor's son. Because he had a mean... His neighbor's son was real mean. I got one like that. And you can ask my girls. Everything that goes wrong, he did it. And most of the time, he really did do it. About nine years old, when he, everything get tore at my house, I blamed him for it. One time I was, I was off preaching, come home. He was sitting there. I come home, he was sitting in my living room eating tater chips, watching TV. I said, what are you doing in here? He, one time I, I went outside in the backyard and I smelled gas. He turned my grill on high as it go and just left. It. Somebody lit a cigarette in it and blowed my house up. My sweet little nephew. But anyway, his axe got stole and he said, I know that boy did it. I know he did. So when he seen that boy, he said, he acts funny. Ladies, are you listening to me? That boy acts funny. 
He, he's, I can tell the way. When he walked by, he didn't even look at me. He's guilty. And then that boy said something. He said, he talks like somebody that would steal an axe. <laughs> and then he said, he looks like somebody would steal an axe. He went home and thought about it and said, how am I going to get him? I, I ought to just call the cops. I just, he went on and on and on and on and on. And he thought that every time he'd see that guy, he'd just get mad. If you, are you, do you feel like it, every time you see this, you just want to just hit them or claw their eyes out or something? And you know what? He's digging out in the yard one day and found his axe. He just lost it. Nobody stole it. And after he found that axe, he seen that little boy and he said, you know what, that boy, he don't act like that no more. He's changed. He talks better. He acts better. Now the truth is, the boy didn't change. The man changed. Now I'm going to tell you something and I'm going to stop for now and have mercy on you. If you've got a bad attitude to somebody in here today in our church and you don't like them, you say, I can't help it. That's a lie. The Bible said, I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. Don't you say you can't help it. That's not true. You say, well, Brother Danny, don't you ever have to pray about your attitude? Oh, do I ever. You ought to try this sometime. I have to continually do it. I can't say I can't help that I don't like so and so. I can't. I can't say that. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Mom said, can't never could do nothing. Don't say you can't. Can't never could do nothing. You just don't want to. The Bible said we're not to judge one another. So, well, I'll tell you what. I don't see why she don't do something with her kids. Their kids are the men. You know, everybody's an expert on other people's kids. <coughs> tell a story and I'm through. A man one time was riding a train and he was coming up, up the track on a long trip. And there was a girl sitting up there and had a, had a little girl and that little girl was screaming and hollering and raising cane and climbing over the seats and everything. And finally this man punched this girl and said, Can you not do something with that kid? And everybody was aggravated because it was annoying everybody. And the girl turned around and said, I'm sorry, sir. I'm doing the best I can. He's not my child. And he said, well, where's the mother? He said, her mother's in, in the car uh, uh, up ahead of us. She's in her coffin. We're going to her funeral. And I'm doing the best I can with this child. Boy, he hung his head in shame. Be careful before you pass judgment on somebody else. You don't know where they've been, what they've been through, and what kind of hell they might be fighting. Uh, number six this, this evening, I was going to talk about build up one another. Romans 14 and verse 19. You don't have to turn there. I'm looking at John 13 and verse uh, number 34. John 13, 34. The Lord said, A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another. And I told you about this morning. That fellow got up. He said, I'm going to preach on the 11th commandment. And everybody said, oh my goodness, what's he talking about? There's only 10 commandments. He said, I'm going to preach on the 11th commandment. It's this one. The Lord said, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another. As a matter of fact, the proof that we're Christians is that we love one another. By this shall all men know you're my disciples if you have love one for another. Let's work on this a little bit tonight. And we here at Shining Light Baptist Church, we're a very diverse group here tonight. We come from different backgrounds, different family settings, raised different. Some of us were, some people in here were raised in church all their life. Some of you never went to church till you got saved. Some of you were raised in a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching home. Some of you went to a dead, cold, liberal church. Some of you didn't go to church at all. And then we all come together and become Shining Light Baptist Church family. Now, the Bible said that we are to build up one another. When you see a member of the church 
uh, you're supposed to build them up. Take uh, Some people take every opportunity they get to tear somebody down. Uh, let's just say... Uh, let's just say that there's somebody in here that I don't like or that I'm mad at or has done something against to me or hurt me or something. Uh, when I'm around Terry, I say, well, there's old so-and-so. Guess what? Blah, 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 and I tear them down. That makes me feel good. All right? I'm around Joe. I talk, I talk about, there they are. Blah, 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 blah. I make him not like him. I'm trying to hurt that person by making them not like him. And I say, the more people I can turn against them and get on my side, the better I'm going to feel. I know, I know a man one time, uh, he, he, um, uh, I was going to do something, not at this church, and I was going to do something. I felt like the Lord leading me to do something. I forgot what it was. We were going to buy something or build something or do something. And uh, this man strongly disagreed with me. He was one of our deacons. He said, I don't, I, don't, I don't think we're going to do that. But he wouldn't come to me like he was trying to correct me or go against me because he was too spiritual for that. And he knew you're not supposed to do that. So what he done, he went over here and he talked to this and he said, uh, I, what do you think about this? And, I don't, and he kind of got that guy agreeing with him. And then he went over to this and he said, what do you think about this? And he kind of got that guy agreeing with him. And he went to several of the men and sort of get him up a little group that agreed with him. Then he come to me and he said, now, now, Brother Danny, you know this is not the feeling of the majority of the church. And I said, what? And he said, you know that this... I said, no, I didn't know that. I, I don't know that and I didn't know that. This is all new to me. I had no idea. I said, everybody come to me. said, let's do it. Let's buy it. Let's go for it, preacher. And uh, you know, what that guy had done... He thought if I can get enough people on my side, then I'll overthrow uh, what this group was. And we can't do that. We can't be uh, dividing up into little groups of fighting each other. I mean, we're not all going to agree on everything. I understand that. But we, for, the, for the church's sake, for the Lord's sake, for the work of God's sake, we are to build up one another and go along. I don't always have to have my way. I'm not always right. Don't claim to be. I'm, I may be just as wrong as I can be on many things. I don't claim I'm always right. Uh, but I do claim we're supposed to have unity. And uh, we're supposed to go together. I tell you what, if I felt like uh, I, that dirt out there didn't need to be moved, that dirt, uh, 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 God needs some dirt, we give Him some of that dirt and make us some more parking over there. And that ain't costing us a dime. We don't pay a penny for that. Hallelujah. And they're going to put grass on their bank and everything. And uh, uh, that's a blessing. I, I'm not against that. <laughs> Amen. That sounds like a good idea to me. Uh, matter of fact, I'd like to sell a bunch more of that bank and get rid of it. But let's just say tonight, let's just say that I didn't want to do it. I said, I like them weeds. Them weeds mean a lot to me. They have sentimental value. I was out there shouting one night in them weeds, and I don't want them weeds to be torn down. And most of the people in this church said, Preacher, I believe them weeds are in our way. I, I'm glad you're sentimental, but let's get rid of them and park buses there or something. You know what I'd do? I'd say if the majority want to do that, then I'll just go along with the majority. And I'm the preacher. I'm the pastor. I don't think a pastor always supposed to get his way. I don't think nobody's supposed to always get their way. I believe we ought to pray and try to follow God and just do what we're supposed to. We're supposed to know one another, one another. We're supposed to consider one another's feelings and consider one another in and build up one another according to the Bible in Romans 14 and verse number 9. What's wrong with building up our brothers and sisters? What's wrong with some of you ladies coming in and saying, oh, you look pretty today. I like your hat. You know, uh, I don't recommend that you men go around telling all the other women they look. I don't recommend that. Uh, but it's okay. Uh, and, and you don't even know about the ladies doing it nowadays. Uh, but uh, uh, I tell you what, uh, with all this crazy stuff going on, but you know what I mean. There's nothing wrong with complimenting somebody and saying, I like your car or I, uh, your, your pretty shoes or you look nice today and, and don't your kids look cute and all that. You know, it goes a long way just to say something positive to somebody. If, 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 uh, if I'm walking in like this, this, and Kurt's walking in like this. Watch this. Let me show you how some people do. Uh, there's Kurt. I'm a Christian. He's a Christian. And I see him, and he sees me, and I do this. Don't think he don't notice that I walked right by him and deliberately did not look at him. Now, there's something wrong. Now, he's saying, well, don't you like him? No, I don't like him. But for the Lord, I'm going to do this. 
God bless you, brother. Amen. Amen. I, I, I do like her. I'm, who couldn't like him? He never says a word. Uh, he don't ever do nothing to make you not like him. Uh, 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 but, I, but listen, if I don't like him, I'm going to be nice. You know why I'm going to be nice to him? For the Lord. Listen, brother, this ain't romper room. I mean, we're not in the fifth, fourth grade here. We are adults worshiping God and the church of the living God. And we ought to treat each other with respect and honor like adults. Say amen right there. We ought to build up one another. And then the Bible said, uh, number seven, we are to accept one another. I'll never get these 32 tonight. I'll just read off all the rest of them here in a minute. Uh, uh, we are to look, accept one another. You know why I'm supposed to accept you? I'm supposed to accept you in the body of Christ like Jesus accepted me. God accepted me because of Jesus Christ. So I'm supposed to accept you because of Jesus Christ. I accept you. We accept every one of us in here tonight. We accept so and so. I've, uh, I've had people tell me. They say, Brother Danny, if so and so's coming, I'm not coming. I've had a lot of them that they said, I'm not coming to, I'm not coming because so and so is there. So and so. Now you gotta get past that kind of stuff. Uh, the ground is level at the foot of the cross. There ain't no big eyes and little U's. There ain't nobody in here more important than nobody else. There's nobody in here, uh, I know churches where there's a, they're what we call the elite. And if you're not a part of the elite, you just are nothing in those churches. Or just one little group. Maybe it's the pastor and a few friends. And, and I, I, by the grace of God, we don't want to have that around here. There ain't no little cliques. There ain't no little group that you've got to be in on, brother. Amen. Ain't nobody in here no better than nobody else. Now the ground is level at the foot of the cross. The truth is tonight, I ought to be in hell and you ought to be in hell. And brother, we ought to thank God. Listen, brother. It's an honor for us to go to church together and worship the same Lord. And we're supposed to accept one another. Somebody said, look at yourself seven times before you judge somebody else. Don't reject somebody else just because they are not exactly like you are. Sooner or later, the strong need the help of the weak. Sooner or later, the strong needs the help of the week. You watch these people that stomp on people and and try to get to the top and always want to be the most important. They're going to need help one of these days. There ain't going to be nobody to help them. Better be good to people. You better be good to people. You better be friendly with people. If there's somebody in here you won't speak to, ask God to forgive you and say, God, I'm wrong. I'm sorry. And bake them a cake, brother. If you don't like them, put poison in it. No, just, I'm just kidding. Amen. Accept one another. Accept one another. And then the Bible said, admonish one another. Number eight, in Romans 15 and verse 14. I mean, just sometimes we're just supposed to admonish and encourage one another. That's right, brother. Uh, sometimes we need to look maybe the faults with us. Have you ever seen people that their kids are perfect and everybody else's kids are the devil? I know people that don't believe... Listen, brother, if the cops brought their kid in and there's 35 eyewitnesses and seen their kid shoot somebody, they'd say he didn't do it. No, he told me he didn't do it. He didn't. Now, I know mother's love is blind and all that kind of stuff, but you've got to realize they said this woman sent her son to the store one day and she sent her son to the store to get some apples. She said, bring me five pounds of apples. And the little boy come back with a bag of apples and he set them down and she weighed them, and that's four and a half pounds. And she called the owner of the store and said, You cheated me. I sent my boy down there for five pounds of apples, and I weighed them, and they're four and a half pounds. And that boy said, and that guy said, Ma'am, he said, My scales are right. He said, I have my scales checked regularly. I weighed them apples. Maybe you better weigh your boy. He, he gained a half pound uh, since he was down here. And you know, they, they, we never think it might be our kids. I've been counseling people uh, uh, for 35 years and kids getting in trouble. And every time I've ever talked with one, the mama says, they just got in with the wrong crowd. And their mama said, they got in with the wrong crowd. And their mama said, they got in the wrong crowd. You know, if you listen to the mama's, I can't ever find that wrong crowd. Who is that? Yeah, who is that wrong crowd? Guess what? Your kid is the wrong crowd. Your 
kid is the wrong guy. My kid is the wrong crowd. When they're wrong, they are the wrong crowd. And the Bible said, we ought to look at it like that. Don't cut corners just because it's our kid. What's right's right for mine. What's wrong, wrong is wrong for mine and for yours and for everybody else. Say amen. Listen, my kids don't always do what I want them to. I mean, they don't always dress right. They don't always act right. They don't always look right. That don't mean it's right. I'm against it. I believe, I believe you ought to do right no matter what you ought to do. It don't matter if it's my kids, your kids, grandkids, nobody. Amen. I'm going to have to say something about that for the youth rally, about how you ought to dress. I mean, y'all been going to church long enough to know how you ought to dress when you come to church. You know that. I shouldn't even have to say it, but I'll have to. Because one sees one, doesn't see the other, doesn't see the other, doesn't see the other. Say, well, they do it, they do it. No, it don't. Listen, what if everybody drinks beer? You going to drink beer? Uh, listen, I'm going to tell you tonight, we need to make up our mind what's right, 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 that's wrong, wrong, wrong. And I'm telling you, we ought to treat each other the same way. Number nine, we ought to greet one another. Romans 16, 16, greet one another. Hey, good to see you. Not look the other way. Are they gone yet? Now I can look back. That is a, uh, that is a big baby type of immature Christianity. We are to greet one another. Not dodge one another in the store. I know people see each other in Walmart and say, Ugh. I'm going down the other aisle. Are they gone yet? I'm looking at the checkout. Okay, they're gone. Let's go. My brother in Christ! Okay, can I be honest with you tonight? There are people in this world that I... It's not going to hurt my feelings if I ever see them again. How's that for being honest? It's not going to hurt my feelings if I never see them again. But I pray about my attitude, and my attitude's right. And I want to be able to walk up to anybody in this world and stick my hand out with a clear conscience and say, How you doing? God bless you. I don't know of a person in this world tonight that I ain't tried to be right with. If I ain't, it ain't my fault. I tried. Amen. Hallelujah to God. Well, now the Bible, let me clarify something. The Bible said we're to greet one another with a holy kiss. Don't kiss me if you see me in Walmart. We're living in a different day. You've got to understand our culture. You just can't, you, you just don't do that nowadays. <laughs> you just don't do that. Now, I have been kissed a lot of times. I, honest to goodness, this, I, and I know, I, I, I've been in the church a lot of times, and then them old women, boy, they'll get you, and they were kissing me here and there, and I just going, ah! It's about to kill me. I was doing like that, uh, and they believe in that. Old Carl Rowland, y'all remember old Carl? He'd grab you and kiss you on Main Street. I mean, his old beard right up against your face and everything. I'm not saying it's wrong, but our, it's a different day we're living in. Look, when we stand for fellowship, we're not going to go around in here kissing each other. It's the wrong day and time for that kind of stuff. If I see you going around here kissing people, we're going we're gonna to have to have a talk. Say amen right there. Don't you be kissing on nobody in here. Well, the Bible said, no, it don't. Not in that way. That ain't what it meant. It'd be like, it'd be like washing feet. In those days, the custom was, like somebody come in your house, you take their coat. In those days, you wash your feet. When I come to your house now, you don't wash my I don't want you washing my feet. It, it's the custom is, is is different now. I have been in foot washing services, and I don't condemn people uh, for being in a foot washing service. But uh, it's it's a different. It, it, it meant then, but it don't mean now. I'm not saying the Bible's wrong. Don't you get me wrong? But I'm just saying, uh, and 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 I'm not saying under certain circumstances, uh, you ladies and stuff, a holy kiss. If it's a holy kiss, it'd be all right. But we don't want none of that unholy kissing. So I tell our bus workers, you can't, you can't be messing around with kissing these kids nowadays. You wind up in prison. I know, I know of bus workers that's in prison right now and didn't do nothing wrong except had a bus kid sitting on their lap. We're living in such a perverted, sick generation that you can't always do some of that stuff literal. But we are to greet one another. And then the Bible said, wait. One for another. In 1 Corinthians 11.33, have a little patience and then care one for another. In 1 Corinthians 12.25, you don't have a right to censor if you don't have a heart to help. 
If you don't have a heart to help somebody, you don't have a right to censor them. In other words, you don't have a right to preaching to them if you don't have a heart that you want to help them. Amen? That's right, brother. Listen, I believe this. Serve one another. As Galatians 5 and verse 13. When somebody needs help, uh, help them. Bear one another's burdens. 13. In Galatians 6 and verse 2. When somebody has a lost husband, get the burden to help them. When somebody has a kid on drugs, get the burden and help them. If somebody in here has got a burden, ladies, share that burden with them. When somebody got a, if you see somebody and they're all tore up because their husband's lost, y'all remember up at New Manor years and years ago, way back years ago, at one, we had 19 women in the church that husbands wasn't saved. And some of them they wasn't sure about. 19 of them that wasn't saved. And those women got a burden and they said, we're going to pray for our husband. And they got together on Tuesday night and just come and made a big line across the altar and, and prayed every Tuesday night for their husband. And some of them started getting saved. That didn't get saved. That didn't get saved. Some of them still ain't saved. Some of them still are lost without God. But you know what they done? They were bearing one another's burdens. They were bearing one. You want to be a Christian? Bear one another's burden. It, like, like Brother Bo here. I don't, I don't have Noah's book, but all you that do, get on there and send him a message and encourage him and say, Brother, we love you. We're thinking about you. Can you imagine what he must be thinking? Can you imagine how I can't imagine how bad uh, that, that, I mean, the devil jumping on in that physical pain and everything he's going through at only 37 years of age. Wouldn't it be a blessing if you would just encourage him. When he texts me, I text him back and I say, Brother, we love you. We miss you. We encourage you. Listen, it might be me and you next. And I hope some of you would bear my burden with me if I had a burden like that. When somebody comes to the altar, I, I used to go preach this church. And when one of the women would go to the altar, I'm not exaggerating, almost every woman in the church would go to the altar. And I tell you what, I was impressed. I really was. I mean, and I know it, it almost got rich, ritualistic, and it got to the point where it's, they all sat down, then another go, every one of them would go back again. They'd all sit down, they'd, look, they'd all go again. And finally, I know there were people thought, oh my goodness, why does every one of them have to go? Though? But I thought, thank God, at least they do care about each other. They care about each other. A preacher should never, ever... I shouldn't have to stand up here and say, would somebody come and pray with that person? Would somebody come... You know, we ought to have a bunch of you that are eager to bear somebody's burden. Brother, there's people, they don't even know what to say when they come up here. And sometimes they're bearing a heavy burden. It makes you feel good if you think, boy, those women care about me. Those men care about me. That you bear one another's burdens. If you're burdened for you, maybe you've got your daddy on your heart. Heart, and your daddy's not saved, and you want your daddy to come to you proudly. Or maybe you've got a boy out in prison, or you've just got out of prison, and you want him to come to you proudly. And you say, Lord, it would be blessing. Some of you ladies get around and say, I'm not every day at lunch. I'm going to get down and I'm going to pray. Listen, let's, we ain't going to have no youth rally worth a hoot if we don't get a burden for it, people. It ain't happening because we got the fairground. It ain't happening because we got a big crowd. It ain't happening because we got the Sadler family. We've got to get a burden and pray and fast that God will give us a great youth rally. Come on tonight. Let's get around. Turn that TV off a while. Leave our computer down a while. And get in the prayer closet and beg God to do something in our youth rally. i got a burden for it. Will you help me bear my burden? Now listen, it ain't but three weeks. You've got 49 weeks a year to not have, have to put that extra effort forth. Let's put forth for the next three weeks and bear that burden. Get a burden for these bus kids. Lord have mercy. Don't treat them. But don't say, oh Lord, I wish I could just lay. I don't ever want to see no bus kids. I don't want to. We ought to, we ought to be in this altar tonight asking God to break our hearts for them kids. They're going to hell if they don't get saved. They're going to burn in hell. And their mothers and daddies are going to burn in hell. The last thing we ought to do is be turning our backs on them. Bear ye one another's burdens. Bear ye one another's burdens. That's what the book says. Serve one another in Galatians 5.13. I didn't say that one. 14. Forbear one another. You know what that means? That means put up with each other's junk sometimes. You know, 
If you're married and you're going to stay married, you're going to have to put up with their junk once in a while. Am I right? Sure I am. You're going to have to put up with something about that mate that you just absolutely don't like. If you're one of these people that says, me and my mate, I've never seen anything in her that I... Please, I don't know. I think you're a liar. Uh, I, I don't know about you. Uh, you, you, you. She may be a mannequin. Uh, listen, brother, I, I'm telling you, uh, you don't have to put up with something in their personality. You don't have to put up with something in their character that you don't like. That's putting it mildly. Sometimes you're going to have to put up with something that you just absolutely don't, can't hardly stand. But you put up, it's like you put up with them car payments every month to keep that car. Yeah. You got a nice car, you put up with them car payments. So I ain't paying no car payments. Well, you ain't going to have no nice car. Right. In marriage, you got a car, you got payments. In church, if you got a good church, you got payments. You put up with the junk for the good part that you get. You put up with what you don't like about it for all the good you do like about it. Forbear one another. Ephesians 4.32, number 15, be kind one to another. Not snappy, hateful, short, grouchy. Bite your head off. I've had people tell me, they say, Everybody be quiet. Shh, Mama's in a bad mood. And here she comes, right, full of demons. Hey, man. I, I seen this week, I was talking, and I was thinking, I was thinking about when the devil gets in your home. Does the devil ever get in your home? Yes, he does. And you just get grouchy. And you're mad, and she's mad, and she's mad, and you're mad, and everybody's mad, and you say, well, I ain't gonna, you ain't going to take it. I'll give you more than you can give me, buddy. I'll bite your head off just to say, you think you can say something mean? I can say something meaner. Yeah. And I thought, you know what? You know what they did in the Bible when that happened? When the evil spirit came, David came playing, put you on some good old-fashioned gospel music. And I mean, I mean, put on some good old gospel music, and watch, he'll drive that evil spirit out of there. He said, I ain't no mood to listen to no gospel music. You got demons on you. Put you in some good gospel music and drive them evil spirits out. You, don't, you might think I'm crazy. I turn my radio on downstairs and ain't anybody downstairs. And leave it on all day long during the day. When I go up and go to town, post office, whatever, and I leave it on. Keep them evil spirits out. It did in the Bible. In the Bible, that's scriptural. What I'm saying is scriptural. Uh, good old fashioned gospel music. Help the devil stay out of your house. Be kind one to another. And then Ephesians 4.32, forgive each other. That's number 16. Somebody done you wrong? Forgive them. Basically, forgive means this. The word forgive means to give up the right to punish. When God forgive us, He gave up the right to punish us. That'll make you shout. God gave up the right to punish us for our sin. That's what forgiveness means. You know what we're supposed to do in church? When somebody hurts your feelings or offends you or you're upset, we're supposed to give up the right to punish that person. Give it up. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to let it go. I'm not going to think about it. I'm going to do just like God forgives me. I'm going to forgive you. Listen, I'm the pastor of the church, and I get my feelings hurt here on a regular basis. I mean, some of y'all do. My feelings are hurt tonight because some people that are not here. It hurts me. I take it personal. It really. I have to pray to get bad feelings out of my heart. You're not the only person that gets your feelings hurt. I get mine hurt on a regular basis. I mean, when I beg you to do something and you won't do it, it hurts my feelings. It ain't going to kill you to sing the choir. It ain't going to kill you to pay your tithe. It ain't, that hurts my feelings. But you know what? I don't have no right to have hard feelings against you no more than you do against me. That's God. It's God's church. He'll take care of it. We love each other. We don't have hard feelings over it. Say amen right there. You know, some people just absolutely can't do that. When they're mad, they're mad. And the world knows it. 
You've got to say, Lord, I'm not going to go by my feelings. I'm going to go by what you said in that book. And I'm going to give up the right to punish. We're to love one another. 17. Speak one to another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. What does that mean? The Bible said that we're to speak to each other in psalms and hymns. That's like if I see you in Walmart tonight after church. I'm going to walk up and say, Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God. You dare me? That's what it said. Speak in hymns and spiritual songs. If I see you uptown, I'm, I'm supposed to say, He'll do it again. He'll do it again. Amen. Hey, I've had people do that to me. Praise God, Brother Danny. I'm in the glory land way. Nothing wrong with that. We speak to each other in hymns, songs, and spiritual songs. Give somebody a CD with some good old-fashioned singing on it. Some of these new people that come in the church, get you some y'all y'all get you some good CDs and put them in your car and listen to good spiritual music. You say, well, I bought this car and it's got these big speakers and I want to hear the bass. And that stuff ain't got no bass. You'll live. You will live. You ain't going to hell. Quit crying. Listen to some good Christian gospel music. Say amen right there. I can't stand to call a Christian and they don't answer the phone and got rock music on their answering machine. Whose side are you on anyway? Who side you on, man? You know it ain't right. Now you can't help it. You're going to hear it. You're going to hear it. We can't help it here. I can't help putting it on my phone, bless the Lord. Be subject one to another in Ephesians 5.21. Husbands, wives, everybody you know, I've done talked about that. 19. Regard one another as more important. Philippians 2. I do. I don't care what nobody thinks. I was a, that ain't right attitude. You should care about what people think. You should care. It's painful for me. And it's it's happened recently. It hurts me to think that I've hurt you. Don't you ever think, well, Brother Danny just does whatever he wants to. He don't think. That's not true. It grieves my heart if I think I've hurt y'all. If I've offended anybody in here, I go home at night and my stomach hurts and I can't sleep. I don't want to hurt you. I wouldn't do it on purpose for nothing in the world. Sometimes I do the best I can and it still happens. And if that does, I'm sorry. But I wouldn't hurt nobody in here on purpose for nothing. We should never say, well, I'm just going to do whatever I want to. I don't care who likes it, who don't. That ain't the right kind of attitude. We ought to pray about our, our actions and consider other people's feelings before we act. Let's move on and get the rest of these right quick. I'll just read these all. 20. Lie not one to another. That's Colossians 3.9. You ain't supposed to lie to each other. If you tell somebody you'll do something, do it. If you tell somebody you'll meet them somewhere, meet them. If you, if you owe somebody money, pay it back to them. If you can't, go talk to them and say, Look, I ain't forgot about it. I'll pay you the money that I owe you. Lord, these people owe me money from here to... Halfway to McDowell, in McDowell County, and I know I'll never see it. And but I, I you know, whatever. I, that ain't right. The Bible said we're not supposed to lie to each other. And then Colossians three sixteen, number twenty one. Teach one another. You mamas help these younger girls. Did you know the older women are supposed to teach the younger women to uh, uh, love their husbands and to raise their kids and how to guide the house? Teach them how to cook. Lord, somebody better. These girls couldn't cook a pop tart, brother. These te- they're coming up without burning. That's true. Amen. They couldn't boil water, brother. Somebody said that one girl got mad. She was about eighteen, and then she said, "Mama, somebody put a joke on me. They sent me this stupid-looking stick with a with a with a brush on the end." She said, "That's a broom, you idiot." And she said, "Well, they didn't even send the cord with it. That's how dumb they are." Teach these younger women. And then comfort one another in 1 Thessalonians 4, 18. 
in sorrow. You know, when somebody dies in somebody's family, it means a lot if people in the church will give you some comfort. You know, you ask anybody in here, they'll say, when, when so-and-so died, uh, the pastor came, so-and-so, they'll remember who in the church came when somebody died. I've heard people, I've heard people say, I was sick and not one person even come to see me. And I asked them, I said, did you ever go and see anybody? Well, no. See, you know, when you're sick, you expect other people to come and see you and check on you. You do it to them. Am I right? All right. Comfort one another. And then encourage one another. First Thessalonians 5.11. Encourage each other. Uh, one thing I like about our secret sisters, I really appreciate and I don't even know who's, who's the secret sisters sisters are, but I see y'all bringing gifts and I hear little things every now and then, and I really appreciate that y'all use that to encourage one another. Secret brothers? I don't know about no secret brothers. Huh? Well, I do too. I mean, well, secret brothers. I don't know about that. <laughs> Secret brothers. Uh, but anyway, I appreciate the secret sisters. Let me tell you what happened today. Let me tell you what happened today right here in our church. A certain ladies having a hard time. Sickness. And another lady in this church today wrote that lady a card and gave it to her this morning. And this afternoon, the lady who wrote the card got a text on her phone that said, You don't know. It came right on time. I needed that. Thank you so much. Maybe we can talk sometime. I need to have just that one little bit of encouragement. You see, being a Christian is more than just, well, I don't do this and I don't do that. And I don't do that. I bless God I got convictions and all that. It's caring about other people. Caring about other people that may not be as high up the spiritual ladder as you are. Amen. Amen. Think about it. The lady that comes and sits right here with all them kids. Look, I see the way some of y'all women look at them. I ain't stupid. Y'all ought to be ashamed of yourself. One was cancer and seven kids. Y'all sitting there judging her like she's... Listen, buddy. Everybody ain't as great and wonderful as you are. Everybody's not as high up the spiritual ladder as you are. You better watch your attitude toward people like that. You say, well, there, I know. I ain't dumb. But listen, listen, every, we're not all on the same level, people. We're not all on the same level. We better watch our attitude toward it's when, when the Pharisees did that. Pharisees looked down on people because maybe they wasn't dressed appropriately or maybe they wasn't, uh, maybe, maybe they didn't act right and maybe they didn't. I've had two or three people say something to me. Did you see how them? I said, yes, I'm not blind. But let's let God get a chance to work on people. Me and you wasn't so hot when we first came in either. Say amen right there. Amen, brother. Now I believe you ought to dress right. You know me. I believe I believe you ladies ought to wear a dress and make your kids wear a dress. And I believe you men ought to dress up and wear a tie. But I ain't going to fuss at you all the time for it. Amen. You get it one of these days. Look at here. We ought to consider one another. Number 26. Pursue one another. I'm sorry. 25. Make something good happen for somebody else. Like that person did that other lady. 26. Consider one another in good works. Go to the altar. Pray with somebody. 27. Speak not against one another. James 4.11. Don't go around the church cutting down somebody. 28. Don't complain against one another. James 5.9. 29. Confess your faults one to another. James 5.16. Just come up here tonight and say, Lord, I'm full of the devil, preacher. Help me. Amen. Number 30, pray one for another. James 5, 16. Number 31, be hospitable one toward another. 1 Peter 4, 9. And number 32 in closing, be clothed with humility one toward another. 1 Peter 5, 5. Amen. I got to look at that and I thought, the Bible tells us all kinds of ways we ought to behave toward each other. And let's do it. Amen. Stand by our head for prayer. Stand by our head for prayer.